Hey guys, it's Steve here with the fifth and final part of our Darth Vader Blender tutorial series. This one will be where we get a final decent looking render out of our, uh, our Darth Vader. So without further ado, let us get into it. Um, I'm going to switch from solid uh, rendered view to solid view here. And where we left off, we already had our lights set up pretty decent and uh, everything was looking pretty good. We just need to start making some render layers now. So this will be called the Darth Vader render layer. And I'm going to create another one for some background lighting and glows. So this one is going to be called glows. All right, and I'm going to add in two circles. So I'm going to have a circle there, tab in edit mode, hit F to fill it, and then double tap R, rotate it. Scale her up a little bit, and let's put her behind Lord Vader here. Rotate it over there, grab this one, Rotate it over here. All right. Now let's set our camera up. So I'm just going to go to front view here and go Alt Control Zero. That'll snap the camera right to that view. And then I'll create the focal length. I'm going to zoom in a bit. So we'll zoom in to something like a 55 millimeter lens. Pull it back a little bit now. And something like that. Looks uh, to be good enough. Maybe look upwards a little bit at them. All right. So we have our two lights here now. This will be our blue glow, this will be our red glow. Um, I'm just gonna take this glow here, go to the materials, go new. We'll name this one blue glow. And this is just gonna be an emission with a blue color. Something cool. And it doesn't have to be very strong. We can just go like a two or three on it. Uh, maybe a four, why not? And then grab that blue glow material, hit the two to duplicate it, and we'll name it red glow. And this one will be red, obviously. All right, doesn't look bad. So uh, now if we go rendered view, we should have both those lights in the background. Excellent. So what I'm gonna do now is move these two to layer two. So grabbing both of them and hitting M on my keyboard, I'll move them to layer two there. Then I'll go to my render layers here and choose number two for that layer. And then Darth Vader needs to be number one. Another thing we want to do is have number two mask this layer just in case Darth Vader passes in front of it ever in an animation or something, it would be masked. All right, sweet. So uh, now what I want to do is set up some focal length and ambient occlusion as well. So with Darth Vader selected, let's give him an AO pass. Boom, right there. Check it there, and then we'll have an AO pass to work with. Now we'll go to our camera settings, choose F stop, choose limits, and then we can adjust the distance with this. That little plus you see there is where the focal length is at. Everything else will be blurry to this point. So we'll take it to about there, and we'll give it about a 0.1 F stop, so pretty shallow depth of field. It will look good though. So something like that is what we want. Now, uh, if you want to see what the AO is going to look like before we render it, this is something new to Blender. You can now go to Display and Shading, actually, right here, and you can choose Ambient Occlusion. See how the AO looks in real time. Very cool looking. You can adjust some of the strength, the samples, and distance, and everything. So that's very cool. You can also have depth of field in your viewport if you want. So if you check that as well, you can set the viewport f-stop right here and choose how you want the depth of field to look. So you can see right now a 0.1 depth of field is gonna be pretty harsh. But uh, I don't know if this is exact to the render or not, but in case of it is, I'll change it to 0.2. So it's a little less sharp of a depth of field. Cool, so that's cool, but we don't need it anymore, so we'll turn those off. And uh, I'm trying to think, is there anything else I need to render out before I do a render now? Um, we have our glows in layer one, we have a model, we have it set up to render transparent background, yes. All right, so let's give it a 100% render, and let's render at 200 samples. Eh, we'll just go 1080, I mean, we'll go 720, it'll be faster. All right, that should be good, and trying to think. One thing I might want to add is, in mine I had some dust floating around and that was pretty cool looking. 
But uh, something that might look cool would be just to add some kind of stars in the distance since I won't be doing the dust. Um, but that would be something you guys can do. It's pretty simple. So I don't think I need to, uh, need to show you that. Just food for thought. All right, so uh, I think I'm ready to do a render. So save a project, hit F12, and uh, let's see what this render comes out to look like. All right, so there's our finished render, and uh, I don't really have anything to complain about it. It looks pretty good. So we're ready to do our compositing. So let us switch from default to compositing. Choose use nodes and backdrop, and let's close off this down there. So we have a lot of room. So control shift will add in a viewer node, and that should pack, uh, pop up in the background there now because we chose backdrop. Um, and let's add a few things to this render real quick. So starting off, let's put that AO on there. Well, let's start with a little bit of fog, a little bit of distant fog. So to do that, I'm going to use a, um, a vector map value. Drop that in, drop the Z into the value, and then Control Shift click that to see what we're getting. Uh, let's choose the size to be very small, 0 0.0001, and you can see we have some fog coming into there then. Uh, 0 0.02 might be better, or maybe even 3. So we have something like that. Then you want to choose maximum and minimum, and then the the minimum maximum will be crank that way down to something like a 0 0.02, 0 0.04, still too high, 0 0.05, there we go. Something like that. Where do we go, just push it a little further. All right, that looks sweet. So now we're gonna add in some of this mist. So, color, mix, and drop this in as a factor. So you see that coming out, not looking too bad. Now it's just way too much of it right now. So first of all, I'm gonna change the color of it to be a little bit bluish, and then change the color to be a little bit darker. All right, so we'll see what that looks like before and after. Not too bad. Um, one thing we can do is drop in a contrast, brightness contrast into here. And if we crank the contrast up, we get the blacks harder and the whites harder. Let's brighten it up a little bit too and something like that. Wait, if we brighten it up a little bit more, contrast it down a little bit more, you can get something a little bit more black and white, which we want. See, we added some more of that contrast and brightness, we get that. So that just makes the fog a little bit more harsh on the back. I think I want to crank that up even more though. We'll go all the way up to, like, we'll try 10, and then brighten up just a little bit. See what that looks like. Before, after. All right, it looks pretty sweet. Maybe not quite all the way to there. All right, good enough. So there's some fog. Now I'll drop in some AO. So I'm gonna do a mix, multiply, grab the AO right there, and we can just drop it in the bottom there. And that's what it looks like with 100% AO. But I normally go like a 0.5 or so. Don't want too much AO. So you can see the difference there. Get some of that ambient occlusion which uh, doesn't look too bad. Alrighty, so now let's add in the backdrop. So that's gonna be a new render layer. So I'm gonna go input render layer. We're gonna choose the glows. And I don't actually wanna use this as the drop in. I'm going to blur it. So we're gonna go filter blur and change it from Gaussian to fast Gaussian. Drop the image in there. And let's go relative along the Y. Let's start with one that's just blurred five by five and duplicate it and do one that's blurred like 35 by 35, something crazy huge. Drop that into the image. So we have that. Now I'm gonna go color mix, whoops, color mix, go add, and we'll add this one in the bottom here. And see what we get there? It doesn't look too bad. We might wanna switch these around actually. So uh, I'll drop this one in the top and this one in the bottom. Uh, let me see. Drop it around like that. All right. So now when I crank the amount up here though, say something like five, um, I should be getting more of this in here, but it doesn't really look to be working like that. Hmm. 
Well, let's drop the uh, alpha over note in there. We'll see what it's looking like against the black. Well, actually, hold on. Maybe I should first put the alpha over right here to give it a black backdrop instead of an alpha. Um, if I turn the... Let me see. There we go. Make this black. All right, cool. Drop that in there. And now let's see what that looks like. Yeah, this isn't... Oh, there we go. That's doing it. So now we can use another alpha over down here. So basically, in case I did that too fast, just an alpha over node with the, uh, the image going to the bottom and black to give it the black background. So now I have this crazy blurred out image and I'm going to add it with an alpha over node on top or below this. All right, something like that. Doesn't look too bad, except it's way too bright. So I'm gonna add in a color mix, multiply black. So this will control the amount of that glow that we have coming in there now. So you can change it to whatever you want to get some of that, uh, that glow coming. That's kind of cool. You don't want too much of it though. And then if you want even more of that glow, can I go higher than that? Yeah, there we go. Turn that up even higher here. So we get even more of the blurred glow in there. All right. So with it combined, we get that. And it's looking pretty decent. Last but not least, we have to add some glows and some lens distortion. So the glows, we're going to do uh, filter, glare. Put it in there. Uh, maybe we want to choose pre multiply this. this. Um, doesn't really seem to make too much difference. I wouldn't bother with it. So first we'll do a basic glow. So we'll change it to fog glow. Turn the size all the way up and see what it looks like. What I'd like to do is turn the mix to 1 so I can see exactly what parts are being glowed and then I can take the threshold down to get everything that I want to be glowing in the image glowing. So I'm just going to crank the threshold down to about there and then I can turn the mix back to 0 and you can see the glow is taking effect now and that just looks kind of cool. Alright, so drop in, just, just duplicate it, no more dropping in, and change this to be streaks. And I like to do two streaks going across as kind of a lens flare effect. So change it to two. Let's make the fade length really long. So you get something like that. Let's turn the laterations up to five so it goes all the way across. And now let's turn the threshold up a little higher. Let's give it some color mod. All right, that looks kind of sweet now. You can see how you get in that. Now all we have to do is make it very minimal by taking the mix down to about a minus 0.97. Boom, that's too minimal. But something that crazy, actually that's all the way gone. I'm sorry, minus 0.97. There, and you get just those light streaks going across. So you can give it a little more if you're feeling adventurous, but keep it low. Something that's sub subtle, subtile is the best. So I might go 0.93. And let's go 0.9, just so we can see more what it's looking like. Boom, and you can see I'm coming in there now. And it looks kind of sweet. So I will turn that up a little bit now, though, just so I can see it there. Cool. So one more that we're going to add in here now. Um, actually, what I did to my scene is well I guess we could do that if we wanted but first let's just see what it looks like doing the ghosts ghosts is basically blender's version of a lens flare so let's see what this looks like at a mix one boom see that's pretty cool but uh, what I think would be cooler is if that was behind the image alright so what I'm gonna do is drop this back at the beginning here right around here or so. Okay, take it right there. See what it looks like, pretty sweet. And now what I'm gonna do is add it back in. So color mix, add. If you leave this to one, you can basically use an add node and this will be doing the same effect as it would be if you left that at zero. So you add it in and you can see it's over the top like we didn't want, but then I can grab my Lord Vader Alpha and use this as the factor. 
boom. And now you can see it's just over that, so we have to invert that factor or just flip his inputs, I think. Would do the same effect. No, that doesn't work. We need to flip the factor. So just add in a color, invert, drop it in there. And now the glow will be behind it and not over the top. And that looks pretty sweet. Nice. If we wanted to change the intensity, we could use a uh, converter math multiply and uh, crank it up to see more of that glow back there. So that looks pretty cool. We won't go over the top of it though. Just leave it at a one. And that's some cool background lighting there. And uh, we're almost done now. Everything is looking pretty sweet. The last thing I would add is the lens distortion. So add in a uh, lens distort node, turn up the dispersion a little bit, and look at how beautiful it, she looks. There you go. She looks beautiful. <laughs> so that's it, guys. Um, that has been the, uh, the video tutorial. It's a little bit too much dispersion, but it always looks so sweet. You just don't want to go for the top. All right. That has been the tutorial. So now, uh, at this point, you can obviously go through and tweak your node setup, but it is not too bad. I have to say, it looks pretty good. Um, one thing, actually, that I didn't do that you could do is drop in a color balance node, convert a color balance. If you weren't entirely happy with the colors quite yet, you could always tweak them still by uh, dropping that in, giving it maybe a little harsher blue shadows, you know, a little brighter reddish, whitish highlights, just to be over the top awesome. Something like that. You get what I'm saying. Not too bad. So let's see what it looks like before the color correcting. A little plain, a little boring, and that just kind of pops it up a little bit more. So that's it, guys. That has been the uh, the Darth Vader. Let's leave that alpha on there. The Darth Vader tutorial series in Blender. So um, if you want to save this image out, I get this question a lot. How do you save it out? Well, you want to make sure your last uh, node is connected to the composite node. That's why I have both the viewer and the composite. And then you can basically go to your UV image editor, which I have down here. You can choose rendered results right there. And that will be this node, but you might have to have it updated. So just like uncheck it and pop it in there again. And then it will refresh it to your uh, finished node there. And you can save it out. One thing I might want a quick change is in my settings here, color management, I might have the gamma set too high, 0 0.05. You might want to tweak that a little bit. Cool. And of course, you can tweak the mist a little bit if that's over the top right too. Something a little darker might be cool. But uh, you can you can play around with that now that you have set up to whatever you like. I'm going to turn that back up a little bit more. Uh, that wasn't quite enough. Let's just go a little bit more than that. See what that looks like when it updates in here? Not too bad. And then you go image, save as image. We'll save this as our Lord Vader. Lord Vader finished render. And there you go, guys. You'll be on your desktop and ready to use. So that's it, guys. Uh, that's the final results from this five-part tutorial series on creating Darth Vader in Blender. I hope you guys have had fun. Learn some things, learn some modeling tips, rendering tips, material tips, texturing tips, and uh, had a good time. If, if you uh, if you had fun, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, I'll see you guys in my next tutorial video uh, later. So, bye-bye.